again. Let me know when to start. Damn, this is a live one. Go ahead. Awesome. What is up? It's me, not Sam. Much better. Um, I just want to start off with some announcements. I need my slides. Um, but I'll also reiterate, boom, volunteers, perfect. So if anyone who is interested or might be interested and a little nervous, it's better that we have your information than not. Um, go to this here website, that is our course website, fill out the form. Um, we particularly would love some more black and brown people, um, especially some men. Um, not a lot of you guys have filled out the form. And if you haven't seen as class has gone on the past couple of weeks, what it's like to be up here and volunteer, it's not to embarrass you or make you look dumb, like share who you are, what you know, what you think, because all of that is valuable. Um, and it's more valuable if we have a little bit more diversity. We got a lot of lovely Indian guys, if y'all seen, and a whole lot of white people. So, like, let's go. Um, we know y'all out there. Shout out to Cameron, Khadija, all of y'all. Check out Yo, this here link. What, yeah. What about Uncle CJ, man? Cousin CJ. Cousin oh, CJ. Sorry, That's my man. cousin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, like, we're getting to the point where we might resort to my family members joining. Like, Stop being lame, be a little bit more comfortable and bold, as I know you are, and hop on the stream and tell us what you think or what you know or so whatever the topics are. Um, me and Niche cannot join as much as we may love, um, but we cannot be the token black people. Um, there's a thousand of y'all out there. I mean, I know this is a PWI institution, but come on, there's more of y'all. We've seen it. I'm sure if we were in Thomas 100, it would still look more brown as we've seen in the last couple of semesters. It's so let's very go. Brown. Very yeah. brown. Um, next slide. Please. Boom. Wink dialogues. Now, that's pretty much the main reason why you guys will see me um, is for some of the information, some requests, some demands, and what y'all need to know about these dialogues. So last week, Block two was published on the registration site. You have two weeks for six blocks. You may notice that you'll still have some time to get your block one in there, um, but sign up for what you need to. Always refer to your dashboard on the website. Check your email for the invitation for each block to come out. But right now you need to be worrying about making sure you have at least two dialogues done. That could be a global and a local, or that could be two locals. Um, you'll have all semester, but please do the minimum. Like, it's not a lot. Speaking of it not being a lot, it's not a lot to be around doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? We have a lot of people at dinner, driving. No. Like, I will come up there and ask you to reschedule as I have before. Y'all know this. It's 90 minutes. We need to be a pre present for the whole time. Don't sign up for no dialogue with your roommate. And y'all know who y'all are, who I'm talking about. Don't sign up with your roommates, walking around, bright lights, cursing, laughing, hee hee ha. No. Be attentive, be respectful, attend all 90 minutes. If you need to leave early, if you come late, you're not getting in. If you need to leave early before that PPE and the third of the last part of the dialogue, you will not receive credit. You will ask to reschedule. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your students, your peers' time. And Let's and don't waste know. your parents' money, man. Those of you who have parents who are funding this. Yes. Don't yeah. waste your parents' money. <laughs> um, so, yes, check out the website. Check out the email. But this is where you can go. The URL is as it is displayed. Again, sign in with your PSU credentials. Refer to your dashboard. You should see everything you need to see. Global dialogues. Local dialogues. Block one, block two. What's available what's full if things are full please wait check again we always up the seats more groups will be posted or you can call or email and we will manually plug you in for full groups wait whoa um, whoa 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 hang on hang on that's a very last resort thing my friend very last resort it shouldn't happen because there should be more than enough seats 
Um, but this only works when you do this next piece of information I have for you. For a tool, you can always unregister. If there's a conflict in your schedule or some social group thing or study exam or office hours you forgot you wanted to go to, go to that website and hit the unregister button. Again, go to your dashboard. Everything that you see is you can utilize. Whether you need to register for a new group or whether you've already registered, that button that will originally be green for you to register should be gray and say unregister. You can do that as many times as you need. Do that, help us, help your peers, help have the seats open for everybody to get what they need done. Yo. This website, your dashboard, unregister if you need to, 90 minutes, don't bullshit. Next Thanks, slide. man. Dude, you're That's it. rocking. Where Great. are you, by the way? <laughs> I'm in Pond. Oh, I thought you were in This is a lovely room. Of... This is yeah. iCarly. All right. I'm awesome. in Cows Grove and Jeff is Freddie. And Nish is my right hand man. Sam, don't fuck with her because she'll bust you in the head. All right, man. <laughs> All right, man. All right, thanks, Joy. Joy Alicious, rocking and rolling. Now. All right, catch you back in the in the control room. Hey, so uh, we so I am uh, I'm back in my my home my home gig here my home dungeon and doing life as it would be, and it's all good. And uh, we're just gonna we're gonna hop in. We're gonna just kind of go in a slightly different direction today. Slightly different. I don't know. We never know where we're going until we go there. And kind of like life, we don't know. Yeah, we we don't know until we we arrive. So, but uh, we're gonna talk about race and biology and sociology and biology and so on and so forth. So let's. I think we have um someone who's gonna hop in first. Am I right? Either Nick or Isaac. Does it matter? Dude, let's go with Nick, man. Let's do Nick. You're on, my friend. And uh, how's it going? Good. It's, it's well, a little subpar than good, but kind of good. <laughs> yeah. Were you out in the ice last night? No. That's, no, that's foolish. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good for you, man. Hey, by the way, uh, Nish, should we rock the uh, top hat question? Yeah, how about how about let's do it right after Nick is off, man. That way he won't have to think about doing it as soon as he's off and the next person comes on, we'll do it. Hey, so uh you have Twitch open, right, bro? Yeah. Um so do you are you where are you where are you by the way? Um I'm downtown State College. Dude, are you in one of those like upscale apartments or something? Um it's it's a little bigger, it's not that upscale. So a lot of the work that was done in here is just like painted walls that a friend of mine did. Um Oh, I got you. Yeah. All right. So you're just rocking the artistic celebration of life. Yeah, I don't like boring. <laughs> All right, cool, man. Awesome. I can tell by your glasses. Definitely <laughs> not boring, man. Hey, look, uh, what, in, what do you study? Um, biology and secondary education. Oh, my God, dude. You're perfect. <laughs> this is perfect because we're going to talk about biology at, to a degree, and you're going to need to know this to teach secondary education. So my question to you is, um, do you follow sports at all? Barely. Dude, you're perfect for this then. Hey, have <laughs> you, do you know what hockey is? It's the one where they try to shoot the puck, shoot the ball through the net. Not the one where they don't pick up the puck with their hands. It's just. Oh, yeah. Ho thing. Yeah, right. That's <laughs> hockey. I was trying to confuse you a little bit. Yeah, exactly. It's on. They do it on ice. Yeah. All right, man. So you're, you're rocking it. So you ever noticed that you ever watched a hockey game ever? I've watched like bits and pieces, not have much you, at all. Have you, okay, Jeff, throw the first that slide up. Have you ever noticed that like every, most everyone who plays hockey is white? I have, yeah, I actually have noticed that. All right. And then do you ever watch, bat? you know what basketball is? That's where they try to, they have a bat and they try to hit the ball out of the park. Yeah, I, I do. I do know what basketball is. Yeah. Yeah. It has bats and uh, nets and, uh, yeah. No, dude, that's baseball. <laughs> I'm confused. You fell for it. Basketball is the one. That no, I'm good. Ball. All right, I got you. All right, <laughs> dude, you you played me right there. That was awesome. All right, I'm, I I assume you knew basketball. All right, so so they're you know hockey, right? These are like you know three, four hockey players, and then you go to put the basketball. Uh, so you know you get you you know basketball players are disproportionately black, right? Yeah. Um, 
can you you got so you're you're teaching um, high school biology, and Jeff, you can put that other photo up for a second. Yeah, just check that out. There we go, man. Do you know who any of those guys are, by the way, bro? You get bonus points if you do. Nope. All right, good <laughs> for you, man. All right, so listen, you're talking to your biology class, and someone asks, like, "Hey, um, you know, Mister Watkins." Um, why is it that um, so many hockey players are white and so many basketball players seem are black? Can you explain that to me? I mean, my first instinct would to be say it's more of a regional thing of where it started, being that ice hockey seems like it, it was a Canadian thing and then we kind of brought it down here or that it's more in areas that are colder, like so obviously there'd be a higher proportion of white people because it's more in those regions. Um, but that doesn't really work with basketball because we can't say that like, oh, African-Americans play a lot more basketball than us because that's not really true. So that one I think just has to do a lot more with differences in anatomy and like natural differentiations. But that's the, then again, we know too that race, it doesn't really account for those things. So it's it's hard with basketball. It's it's hard. Mm -hmm. I okay, don't really so know how to explain that one, dude. Okay, so awesome. So you, so you started well. You could, you, you know, at any moment, th these are these things that are really hard to talk about, and I'll, we'll make sure that we talk about it in a way that. So with so when you think about hockey, you start thinking about cold climate where hockey emerged, mm -hmm. colder climates, mm -hmm. more white people. Yeah, right. And so you think like, okay. Right. Let me ask you this. What's the difference in skills that are needed to be a good hockey player and a good basketball player? What do you imagine? I mean, so in my opinion, it'd be for hockey, it's kind of you need to be more agile, light on your feet. But with the balance aspect, you got to yeah. be really good at balancing because I know I've tried to skate before and that is a mess. Um, no one wants to see me being tall trying to skate. It's, uh -huh. it's flailing. But so in my opinion, it's a lot it's a lot more balance and agility where uh, basketball, you kind of need to be taller, but you need to be agile, but you need to be taller, need to have good hand-eye coordination. Um, other than that, oh yeah, it's kind of just so, agility. Okay, so when I think about that, what you said, like agility, good on your feet, et cetera, I thought, well, that's basketball, right? Basketball is like, if you study, I mean, people who play basketball, right? It's a lot of footwork, obviously. So, I mean, this is good. I like I like what you said. Listen, f dude, first off, it's really important. People write entire research, long tracks on this, you know, 50, 100 pages, right? We're like jumping into it really fast. So like we'd have to start at the very beginning and, and move forward to think about it. But these are the kinds of questions that we get asked or people start talking about over beers in a bar or something like that. And like people start throwing ideas out and we got to be like, all right, what is a, an acceptable, what, what's the right idea? What's a wrong idea? What's a racist idea? What's just like a sociologically smart or not very smart idea, et cetera. So you've done really good thus far. All right, so it seems to me, or hockey, are you, so it seems to me though that when I think, so you like good eye-hand coordination you said for for basketball, but also hockey, man. You ever watch watch a game sometime? Watch that puck. Watch how fast it goes. Like, holy smokes, man. Okay, so if you think about it in that sense, good on your feet, really good eye-hand coordination, quick responses, and strong, right? It's because basketball, increasingly, you know, you're you're playing, especially when you get under the net, you, you got to be really strong. All these guys are strong, man. Um they all, they would be the same thing, basketball or hockey. Those those things would seem like they would fit for both groups, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's go with, let, let's go with where they start with, the, how about something else? Like what, what would, so the body size is good. You got to be fast, you got to be strong, you got to be agile, you got to have good eye-hand coordination. That's really every sport, really, when you get to yeah. the peak, peak level. Um, what else? You said, yeah, go I mean, ahead. Physically, I mean, height, I know height would have, like, because obviously in hockey, you do not, like, want tall people. Um, seems like tall people have harder times doing those things. But basketball, you need tall people. Um, mm 
Mm-hmm. I don't like, I honestly just can't really, now I'm kind of like, you know, it, so what else probably good. No. Okay. Hang on. So like you say, all right, so you look at basketball. So height, although if you can shoot, if you're have like, if you can shoot killer uh, three pointers in basketball and you, mm-hmm. you're not very tall and you can't jump or anything, I think you're probably pretty valuable to a team, right? You know what a three pointer is? yeah okay all right. all right so you're like dude you're totally advanced you're probably like a a, a sports jock all right man so uh yeah what else what how about jumping does that matter i mean yeah that is true yeah because so you're I a mean, biologist no go ahead go ahead because i mean yeah like i mean obviously in hockey you don't really need to jump at all so it's kind of like meh but i mean yeah basketball obviously to go up and get rebounds and stuff like that yeah but what is to. jumping bro what is jumping man what's it based on uh which I muscles guess, leg muscles <laughs> yeah and what do you need in hockey what what do you absolutely have to be in hockey man well hang on what what's one of the most beneficial muscles of the body to play hockey at the level of professionals legs too Probably not. You ever watch yeah. those dudes, dude? They're so fast, like strong. Yeah. All right. So, okay. Um, so as a biologist, what, mm, yeah. Okay. So, so you got, so you got this thing, right? And you got these guys who you're watching this one sport and it's all these white guys and this other sport and it's all these black guys. And we're going like, huh, they're, the, the, the skills they need are largely the same. The body types are largely the same because, bro, even in hockey, man, if you got like really long arms and you can, uh, and you know, and you can reach your stick really far and so on and so forth, like that all matters, man. It's like huge. Even in tennis, bro, like one time, so I was in, um, I stayed at a hotel in, in Qatar one time when, when the Qatar Open was happening in the tennis tournament and I didn't know it. We, we arrived really late at night and we were, we went down to breakfast the next day and all these really tall dudes were walking around, right? Really tall guys. I mean, everybody was tall above average, except there were a couple short ones, but mostly really tall. And, um, and I, and I, and I said, whoa, there's some sort of professional event happening here to my wife. Right. And we're like, yeah, like, what is this? Like, we didn't know. Right. And, uh, and I'm thinking, well, what kind of sport would have really tall guys? And I, and I wasn't thinking tennis at all, right? But then I realized, but then I saw one of the tennis players who I knew, right? I mean, who I knew who he was. He wasn't really that famous at the time, this Djokovic. We were sitting right next to this guy. He's like really tall. And I'm like, oh, damn, it's tennis. Like, you know, like really, uh, it, it just really jumped out for me. You know what I mean? So like long arms. So then I thought about it. Well, long arms on the tennis court, man, your racket can stretch further. So it's like, awesome. So... Dude, how about social class and money? Think about sport, basketball and hockey and money, class, wealth. See, in my mind, I wouldn't, I don't think I'd necessarily equate it. Cause I mean, if it's, if it's a sport, then why does really money have anything to do with it? I mean, I mean, if we're saying that hockey seems to be more dominated by white players and it's a more like white sport, then I'd assume it's probably dominated in terms of money. But then again, comparing like the NHL and the NBA, I don't know like where more money would like float or I don't know. I have a hard time with that one. Okay. All right. Cool, man. Listen, this is why this is why this study of race relations and all this work that we're doing is really complicated, right? So it's really cool to have you, to to have you on. This is why I do these things with these case studies with people, right? Have come on and like, just let's, let's think it, think it out, think out loud. Right. So, so look to play basketball, you need a, you you know, you need a ball, right. And you got to have access to, to gym, but you need a ball. Mm -hmm. How much, do you have any idea how much hockey equipment costs? I'm, I mean, I know pucks are way more expensive than they should be. <laughs> <laughs> dude, dude, that's awesome, man. All right. How about your skates and your pads and all of that? And then, yeah. then ice time. I mean, I know just from like recreational skating and stuff, like good skates are expensive too. Like, 
kind of like for no reason like all that stuff seems just like it's expensive for no reason dude hockey sticks and when i was a kid i could buy a hockey stick for like 12 or 15 dollars it was just a piece of wood with a curve at the end and now mm -hmm. hockey sticks can are hundreds and hundreds of dollars like like bats for in baseball so like an ice time right you spend a lot of money to have ice time if you want to be a good hockey player you got to have a lot of money you got to be able to be on a team that costs money you got to rent ice Mm -hmm. And and this is a building where ice you're going to have to run ice all year round. So this is really expensive, and it, it costs a lot. And then all of all of this money, like you know, you you are not unless you get someone to fund you, you got to come up with a big chunk of change to be at a really top level as a hockey player in order to be able to get the kind of skills that you need to move to the next level because you got to compete against other really good players, right? This isn't about buying a pair of $100 skates and, and a, you know, a $50 stick and, and a, you know, $20 puck or whatever and just go out and play. So now you're in a different world, whereas basketball, yeah, okay, you can you can play outside. There are all sorts of places to play. You can, you have school gyms. You don't, you don't have school ice arenas. I mean, some really rich schools probably do, but um, yeah. But you can become a pretty good basketball player with a single ball in your own living room or basement or driveway and learn to dribble. Like you, there are so many skills that you can pick up to be really a top to notch player before you go even step into the gym. Whereas that's not, that's much less true with hockey. So, you know, so there's an idea. So first off, it is not, it's not like, um, so when we see, you know, black hockey players, for example, they probably come from, uh, like in the United States, black or brown hockey player. When we see white hockey players, what's the first thing that would come to mind for you? Are they poor or at least middle or upper middle class? For hockey players? Mm -hmm. the, I mean, just thinking about, about it in that terms, that it's not accessible, I would say they'd have to be at least upper middle. Yeah, so whatever it is, right? Whoever it is, they're white, black, brown, it doesn't really matter, right? And then you're interested. So you're already starting right there. Whereas anybody can play basketball and the cost money to be on traveling teams and all of that, right? You're going to, your games, your game's going to get much better if you're on all these travel teams, which again, costs a lot of money just playing basketball, right? Mm -hmm. So, so when class comes in and money comes in, now you, you've really complexified this a great deal, right? Um, and so you can assume that anybody who's playing hockey is not poor. It's not poor. Do you, and hockey arenas? And in the burbs, and you know what I mean, and more likely to be in the yeah. burbs, and it, so like, okay, you're just sort of out. You, you're sort of in this other realm, right? So if it's in the in a black suburb, it's a, it's in a black community. It's a black suburb, right? It's not like you know downtown Cleveland, where kids yeah. are going and hanging out. Um, okay, so so we we've gotten to the place where like, yeah, it's not re it's less about body, and it's all what about culture? How much does culture play into it? I mean, just thinking stereotypically of hockey versus basketball, I mean, it seems like hockey has turned into the white man's sport and like basketball is more of like a black man's sport. Or And so it just seems like socially it seemed to fall into those things. So it seems like it's just going to be perpetuated that way too. I mean, that's mm -hmm. just me because I don't really watch it that much, but it just seems like it's kind of come to be accepted as those ways. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then, and then um, you have, uh, and then you have, yeah, it's like who your heroes are, right? Who your role models are, who you want, who you want to be like, you know what I mean? It's like, I, if I grow up around baseball or football or basketball or hockey or something like that, then I'm going to be drawn toward that. So there's like a cultural piece. People might, you know, like ho there's hockey families, there are basketball families, there are baseball families, right? It's just part of like a whole context within which people are living. And so, you you know, we 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 strive, you know, that some kid in, you know, in, in, in North Philly, um, a black kid in North Philly might, might, just be really enamored by hockey, but it might happen that way by some for some reason. But he's but if he's into sports at all, or if she's into sports, a woman, a, a young girl, she's probably much more likely going to be drawn to basketball. You know, just if we compared those two, mm -hmm. um, dude. All right, so ready, Jeff? Can you put up? I'm going to keep you on here a sec. Well, actually, hey, can. Uh, 
can we bring somebody else on really fast? Uh, another bro, Nick, you you killed it actually. I'm gonna let you. <laughs> we're gonna let you go. That was great, by the way. Yeah, I mean, you, you see this stuff, right? But now, what I'm gonna do? We're gonna bring somebody else on, um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about more about the like biology stuff. We're gonna we'll see where we go. Okay, cool. dude. Thanks, man. Thanks for hopping on. No problem, I, thanks, Sam. Yo, awesome, Isaac. What's up? Hey, how's it going, Sam? Dude, I'm I'm doing all right. Man. Are you in State College? Yep, uh, downtown Beaver Hill. Awesome. Hey, let's do the top hat, by the way. All right, uh, Nish, you ready? Hey, uh, so. Isaac, you can do. So Top Hat's going to be up in like 10, 10 seconds or so. All right. Isaac, you can just do it. Do you have your do you have it open on your phone, bro? Do you use your phone for that? Uh, it, I have it open on the computer right now. Ah, you're the best, man. All right. Isaac, tell me when it's up. It, it's up. Oh, there you go. All right, man. <laughs> so did, did you get caught in the ice last night? Um. I wasn't caught into it, but I actually had to go start my car. Uh, so I walked a little bit in it and it was a little icy, but it wasn't too bad. Dude, I had to walk, I had to get home last year in the ice or two years ago. I crawled part of the way, man. It was crazy. All right. So listen, are you a sports guy? Um, not big into sports, but uh, I watch them sometimes. What's your, what's your major? Uh, architectural engineering. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hey, Jeff, can you put up this one slide? So the next one about the runners. Do you do you follow like track and field at all? Uh, not that much, no. Okay. Do you do you ever watch like the 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 hundred meter, um, yeah, the hundred meter sprint finals of the Olympics for men's or women's? Yeah. And do you ever? What do you notice about people? Um, I guess yeah. Uh, the majority population of. Uh, like sprinting and uh, running are uh, African Americans. Yeah, not well. Okay, hang on, man. Sprinting and running. What? There's a difference there. So, what mm -hmm. do you mean? Are you mean sprinting, or do you mean sprinting and running? I, I guess I mean both uh, sprinting and running. Okay. So, what do you make of the fact that? Yeah. Here, let's put it like this: as far back as I can remember, the sprint finals for both men's and for for men's, like um, like twelve years ago in the Olympics, twelve or maybe sixteen years ago, there was some Chinese dude who was really tall and really fast. But otherwise, it's people of African ancestry. Mm -hmm. How do you explain that? Um, I'm kind of also at a loss for uh, for words. I was listening to uh, the conversation with uh, hockey and basketball. Yeah. And, um, I mean, it, it could have to do uh, something like along those lines. Um, you were saying, Nick was saying uh, regionally. Um, uh, I couldn't really tell you, but like I know uh, like maybe some African countries uh, were like really into running. I couldn't tell you why, but. Um, yeah. Do you have any examples of that? Um, I remember watching this one movie and it was with. Um, I think the country of Nigeria, maybe. Yeah. Um, I, I might be mistaken with that, but yeah. Uh, I, and it was about like the uh, first African runners in the Olympics. Yeah. Uh, for track and field. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and what that tells you is what? Is that, what does that uh, tell you? That uh, uh, running is like a major part of. I don't know, their lives maybe. Okay, and which tells you what then? They're good runners. Yeah, but why are they good runners? Uh, I, maybe uh, having to do with their anatomy. Well, hang on, no, no, no. Hang, but, well, maybe, but go back because they do it a lot, right? So it's yeah. part of their lives, right? So that's. A, I mean, I you, I think it's what you were saying. I just wanted to close the loop right okay. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what you were saying, but I, I just wanted you to say it out loud so we were really clear. Okay. Yeah, it's like they're like, like, dude. For example, who? Let me ask you, who's the fastest woman in the world right now? I don't know the fastest woman. How about the fastest man in the world? Uh, Usain Bolt. How about the fastest? 
the how about give me one American? Where's he from, by the way? Uh, Jamaica. Okay. Where, give me like one American sp sprinter. Could you name one? Men, men, men's or women's? I, I could not. Dude, how about one uh, mar American marathon runner? Mm -mm, couldn't. Like, do you know who? Do you know one who ever won a New York City marathon or a Boston marathon? I, I don't have any of those names. <laughs> All right, dude, that's that's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. Look, yeah, it's like in in our culture, even as even as a guy who's not really into into sports, even Nick, who's not into sports at all, and you're not really into sports, you said, right? No, not but really. You would still know that. I mean, th these people, if you if you were from Ethiopia, dude, you would know like marathon runners. They, these people, these people are like gods. You know what I mean? If you win the Boston Marathon, New York City Marathon, whatever, you're like a god. Everybody knows who you are, right? In Jamaica, everybody, it's not just, it's Usain Bolt, but it's like, come on, man. It's like, everybody knows. If I ask that question, give me like, to, if I was in Jamaica and I and we had a, I had a Jamaican student on, just any Jamaican student probably, it wouldn't matter. And I said, name me, name three Jamaican sprinters, men's or women's. They'd name three quickly. They just would, right? Trinidad, similar, right? But here in the US, like track and fields, like, eh, whatever. So therefore you come from a country where this is really important and really valuable. And it's something that you, people aspire toward. In a, in a huge way, right? So it's like you put a lot of energy in, and the more people who start, it's like the more people that play basketball at the at the lower level, or play hockey, or run, or or run, the more the the, the greater the likelihood that we get to the elite people who are doing it. That you're going to find the elite elite runners because you, if you start with a pool of of I don't know, you know, like ten thousand. The chances are you a couple of them are going to be compete worldwide and are going to be in the Olympics, man. That's just how it is, right? So go to anatomy. So wait, are you architectural engineering? Yes. Okay, dude. Think architectural engineering. Talk body type. All right. What is that? What do you expect to be true of those of all those men in that photo that you saw? Uh, with, with the running. Mm hmm. Um, Sprinting. I'd say, uh, they'd have to be, you know. Uh, strong muscles everywhere. Their bones need to be, uh, you know, really strong, uh, quick on their feet, uh, pretty stable. Okay, so that would be like a basketball player, but not like a really fat. Okay, okay, got it. What what else? Uh, Any, anything else? Because you're going to be fast. Mm, yeah, like right. fast, uh, fast reactive muscles. Uh, I don't know, something to do with like, Think architectural uh, yeah, like, and think you're 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 getting into the deeper engineering of things. Think architectural engineering. What would you expect in a body? The architecture of a body. Uh, I guess lo longer legs. Okay, awesome, man. Mm -hmm. And which means if you have longer legs, then it means longer you have a legs. shorter torso. Mm -hmm. For sure, right? So. These guys, what's interesting is that what we see here with these sprinters, they're also predominantly of West African ancestry. It's not just African ancestry, West African ancestry, right? So it's going to be part of a place in the world where genetically speaking, DNA admixture has, has um, selected for slightly shorter torso, slightly longer legs. So that on average, so we're talking about average. It doesn't matter where you go in the world. I can find some... I can find anybody. I, there, there are people that stand out with different body types and body sizes, but we want to go with averages because we'll, when we're looking at, remember, we're starting with a huge population and the more people in that huge population that have the ideal body type, engineering speaking, and speaking as an engineer, then the greater the likelihood that more of them will excel. Make sense? Yep, makes sense. Dude, so who has... Let me just ask you this. Give me a country in the world where you could go where people would have really short, long torsos, upper torsos, and shorter legs. Um, Nigeria. I don't expect you to have an answer to this, by yeah, the way. Uh, go ahead. Uh, Nigeria. 
No, dude, Nigeria has long legs. Nigeria is oh, West yeah. Africa. That's where a lot of these guys are Nigerian. Short, short legs? Yeah, yeah. Oh, pardon me. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Short, shorter legs. And again, we're not talking by like an inch. We're talking like, you know, even a, a, mm -hmm. it could be an inch, but it could be just a, a, a half inch or a centimeter on average. We're not talking a lot. But yeah, so long, slightly longer legs or slightly shorter legs and longer torso. Um, maybe uh, like European countries? No, not European no? countries, okay. no. By the way, when we see, I, this went back to Nick, like a lot of white people are really in the back. A lot of white people playing the NBA are coming from Eastern, from Europe, and especially in, from Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. Listen, because basketball is huge over there, man. It's huge, and so many people play. But nonetheless, no, not Europe. Okay. Um, I mean, an only other guess, which is probably also wrong, like South America. Yeah, okay, it could be, man. Yeah, indigenous peoples, any indigenous peoples, right? Any people who derive their ancestry from East Asia. So could be like any, right, like N Native Americans, right? Because it's all direct. We're going to talk about this in a few minutes, but like you could go to Korea. You're never going to see a Korean in the 100 meter sprint finals ever in the history of life, unless it's someone who moved to Korea with different DNA, right? Or they're mixed or something, but you just are never going to see it. Longer torso, shorter legs. That's good for lots of things. One thing it's good for, by the way, Jeff, can you put the next slide up? Korea and China, right? Even though, once again, China is a huge place. So there are lots of different ethnic groups in China. But mm -hmm. um, like, do you, do, you know, do you know who these two people are? Have any idea? I do not know now. Do you know which one's the man? Is it which name is the male name and which name is the female name? Would it be uh, Chen is male? Um, no. No. Okay. Chen is female. You had a fifty percent chance of getting it right. Yeah. By the way, there's no reason you should know that, right? Like, I don't. People in China wouldn't necessarily know the difference between different names, you know, and you know which name is a female and which name is a male. So, you know, there's no reason you would know that. Yeah. So the guy on the top, he's the top table tennis player in the world. Mm -hmm. And the woman on the bottom, she's the top table tennis player in the world. And so they're both from China, right? And four of the top five top players in the world are, uh, are four of the top five men's players are, are Chinese. And six of the top seven female women's players are Chinese. And the other two that like got left out are Japanese, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like this is table tennis is just huge. It's not it's huge here. If you go to a, like if 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 you go to a frat party and you know you're not playing beer pong, maybe they have a table tennis table, right? But otherwise, it's like it's huge in China, man. Mm -hmm. And everybody know people know who these people are. They're like well known. It's kind of like you know. Anyway, but here. It's very similar. Rick, you got to be fast. You ever watch? Oh, yeah. They're hella fast. Yeah. But they also can be really squat because they can, you know, anticipate where the ball is going to be. You got to be super fast. So you, they don't also have really long arms and stuff, right? It's not like tennis itself, like the story I was telling mm -hmm. in Qatar. Um, hey, by the way, so one of the things, so now we're looking at biology and race. So, like, you can see that, well, on average, certain population groups have on average certain body features and body types in the case of running like slightly long longer torso and shorter legs okay that would favor certain sports over other sports but it, it doesn't mean that, that you know there aren't there aren't west africans who on average have longer legs and shorter torsos it doesn't mean there aren't west africans who also who who have long torsos and short legs right there are but we're always talking about averages. So in addition to being something that's part of a culture, there can be physical differences in people that allow not only an individual to be better at a sport, but allow groups of individuals who share similar DNA admixtures to be on average better. Does that make sense, dude? Oh yeah, that totally makes sense. I understand that. And so it's not, It's and that's a very different way of turning on the television, oh, black people jump really high, so they're good at basketball. It's like, nah, man, that, that that's not what, what we're talking about, right? Skate, my guess is if you took ice skaters and who spend so much time developing their, their leg muscles and, 
and who are super fast, man. And you take them off their skates and you say, hey, now go start jumping on a basketball court. A lot of those dudes and, and women would jump much higher on average than most people because they've really honed those muscles. Definitely. And uh, if I could give you uh, just an example of like another sport. Yep. Um, so I'm a gymnast. So, uh, and predominantly, like, especially the Olympic gymnasts, yep. they are predominantly really short, like yeah. around five foot or so. Um, so, and that uh, definitely has a lot of things to do with center mass. So, you know, the shorter you are, the better you flip. So, and that's the idea, like better you flip and the more you can really control your body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So are you, are you, um, are you, uh, um, wait, so you are you on the gymnastics team here at Penn State? I'm, on, I'm not on the varsity gymnastics team, but I'm on club gymnastics. Yeah, okay, I got you, man. So how tall are you? I'm 5'9", and I wasn't too great of a gymnast, so. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I did decent. But you look really strong. Do you do the rings and stuff? Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. uh, one of my best events is the rings. Is the rings? Yeah, so like you probably, yeah. yeah I mean, you look, I can see in your neck and your arms, you, you know, you look like you got some guns there. Um, like you have to be, yeah, I know like the women, I, I this, this, uh, uh, I look at s some of the women who, and, you know, and I'm like, my God, they're so, so short, you know, mm -hmm. like this Biles is like tiny, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and J one of our, one of our mods, Jamie was an ice skater. She was like a really, really serious ice skater. And she was, she's really short ice skaters, same thing, you know, similar kind of thing. All right, dude. Awesome, man. Good luck with gymnastics, by the way. And thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for thanks for hopping on. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for having me. Have a good one. Yeah. All right. I appreciate it, man. Hey. Um. <laughs> hey. Hey. Can we? Um. Dude, I. I find this stuff so fascinating, by the way. Um, I, this is, I'm just speaking to the class before we bring the next person on. I don't know who's going to be. Let's, let's, who should we bring on, man? How about Neha? Want to bring on Neha? Hey, uh, but I, I find this stuff so fascinating. It's just such a, like, to be thinking these things through and how culture and race and sociology and, and, uh, and social class and like, you know, biology and I, it all comes together in these really, really complicated ways. It's, it's really fascinating. Um, Niha, what's happening? Hi, how's it going? Dude, I'm rocking and rolling. I'm rocking. Where, and where are you in state college or are you elsewhere? Yeah, I'm in my apartment at state college. Yeah. Cool. Where's that? Um, it's a little off. I live off campus, so it's yeah. like a mile or two away from campus. All right, cool. And wh what do you study? Uh, BBH, Behavioral yeah. Health. Oh, yo, perfect. You would have been good on the last one too. Hey, hey, what, and what is, um, what's your ancestry, by the way? Um, I'm from like South India. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And are you, were you born there or born in the U.S.? I was born in India. Yeah. Cool. And, and do you, you, did you move here or are you just uh, here going, are you an international student or are you now? No, we've been living here for quite a long time now. We moved here when I was like six years old. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, so here's a question I want to ask you. If someone, so you're, you're, you're studying BBH, right? Um, if, if someone asked you this, so you're sitting in a, around, you know, like, hanging out and someone says hey what's the story of that when you think about human biological and cultural diversity biological and cultural diversity um I explain it from both a creationist and an evolutionist perspective what's the what's the creationist perspective for so much day Let, let's start with evolutionist perspective for so much day. evolutionary perspective right for so much biological and cultural diversity what what, what do I, what what's the story what do you know about evolution 
Um, well, if we talk about evolution, like the Darwinism is like the first yeah, thing yeah. that comes up. And it's just like how species like from gener- like millions of years ago have adapted to their environment and things like that. Um, what else? So, so then why do we, why do, you know, because you look at the palette of human beings, right? All mm-hmm. shapes and sizes and so on, right? Mm-hmm. Even just in a place like India, as an example, right? Um, how do you explain that? How do we get to be so different? Biologically speaking. Um... And by the way, anybody in the home viewing audience, i.e. other students, you should be trying to answer this question yourself, right? How do we get to be so different? Well, one thing that comes to mind is that I learned this in like freshman year of high school biology is that we are 99% the same, like biologically and genetically speaking. Mm -hmm. So it's like that 0.1% that like makes us all so different. And I guess like region and the cultures and just like geography of like where populations live yeah, make us and, different. And yeah, and how do we get physically different? Um, like why? What like what happens that that happens? Well, obviously, because I'm from the southern portion of India, I, I have a more like a darker skin tone than like people of the northern India and yeah. like um compared to like white people in the United States and like the European countries. Um I know like since India is like more closer to the equator, you can say that those are like physical differences. Mm-hmm. And how did that happen though? How did it come that you have darker skin closer to the equator, let's say? Um, I mean, I don't know, like, just geographically, like, speaking, like, I don't know, like, we all just kind of dispersed when... All right, so think biology, right? Okay. No, this is good. See how you're, like, fumbling? We all just sort of dispersed. Wait, where? Where do we disperse? What do you mean? Actually, go there. Follow that out for a second. (laughs) Okay. Um... I was going to go all the way back to like Pangea and like where okay. like Dude. everybody was like a clump. Okay, go ahead. Kill it. And then go just, for that. Yeah, that clump basically just like dispersed. And then, and then what now happens? we are where we are now. Okay, so they disperse. And what happens is they disperse. By the way, you're doing great. This is like, this is super complicated. And the, the thing is, you could go, you could take this answer and easily 150 different directions like you could start into it so you know you just pick one and i'm just going with you right so Mm -hmm. then what happens is they disperse like what happens what's the mechanism um i think once they disperse they like to group amongst the people that they find commonalities with uh, but how did they get come they were all a clump they were all the same but they meant the same now now you jump to commonalities now you've jumped to differences. How'd they get the differences? I mean, wouldn't that where like evolution comes? Yeah, okay, go ahead. So what is it then? So what's evolution? Um these are really tough questions. <laughs> uh yeah, like well, if we're talking about evolution, I guess it would depend on so like okay, we started with the Pangea and then we dispersed. And then with evolution, it's like where like where the populations are right now, and they would have to adapt to their environments and like the food that they can find okay. and like the the things basically like our physical um our physical attributes would have to adapt to where we live right now. Okay. All right. Yeah, listen, man. That yeah, okay. This is that's awesome. Nice job, by the way. Come on, are you kidding me? Here you are. You know, I throw the, you know, bring on the camera and be like, all right, explain evolution, right? Wait till we get to creationism, by the way. Are you a creationist? Are you Hindu? 
Yes, I am. Oh, this is going to be really hard for you. <laughs> All right. I got it. I mean, you could just pick one of your five billion gods that you have and go with that. But whatever. We'll like, we'll, you'll, you'll be able to get off the hook really easy. So, so here's the thing, right? So human, Jeff, can you, can you put the, that next slide up um, or niche? Uh, so the idea is, so what, what we think is, you know, human beings mostly we emerge, you know, out of Africa, right? And, but this, it gets complicated, right? And increasingly, it gets just incredibly complicated as, as we go along. I mean, it, it's really fascinating. Um, but, you know, we see the, you know, that we start to see these connections. So the idea with evolution is there's this, this process of the adaptation of life. Life forms are adapting to their environment in lots and lots of different ways. And so they're, you know, um, you have genetics, you have, you have, well, here, I'm not, I'm not going to get too involved in it because we don't need to get too involved. We're just doing the basic thing and I want to get the creation. So, so as people start to move in different areas of the world, what you said is, well, you, you know, you, you're going to find different food, right? You're going to encounter different, you know, um, different terrains and different climactic conditions and, you know, different, like, like, it's going to be hotter and colder or more moist or more dry. I mean, any number of things. And then what happens to the body when you find, when you encounter these conditions, like what's the key idea in evolution? What happens? Um, adaptation. Yeah. So some, so some people are better going to be better adapted to certain environments, right? Like you'll be better adapted because you have darker skin even though it's not extremely dark, but you're going to be better adapted to the sun than I'm going to be adapted to the sun, right? So, because, you know, we, there's still is this thing called, the, you know, the, we, I, you know, the, the idea of skin cancers and so on, this is not new, you know, like you get to, you can have too much or too little ultraviolet radiation from the sun. And so, you know, well, we, we, I, I, I won't go into skin right now. We'll do that in a different class because it's kind of a cool story, but, you know, you, but people who have, darker skin pigmentation are going to be better adapted to, you know, the, where the sun is the most intense, which is going to be more along the equator, for example, right? And the further you move away from the equator, the lighter you need your skin to be as opposed to darker. So like you, for example, in state college these days, have you been in state college for a while, right? Since yeah. the start of the semester, how many sunny days have we had? Not many. Exactly. And so for me, that's okay. I don't need a, because the need, I don't need a lot of ultraviolet radiation from the sun because I, I need the sun to help for vitamin D and calcium and so on, right? But you need more than I do, and you know you got to make sure that you get it because your your skin your skin naturally protects you from the sun. So that means you got to get a little bit more to produce the same amount of calcium and vitamin D and so on and so forth as I have just naturally as a white person. So I can move to a really northern climate and I can do pretty well and getting out a lot of sun, but I'm going to have a harder time along the equator, whereas you're going to be, you're going to do better closer to the equator. Although your skin isn't particularly dark. And so you don't have a lot of melanin, you know, a lot of protection. And so the equator isn't going to be really good for you either. Right. Unless you do you get really dark in the summertime when you're in the sun. Oh yeah. I, I get really dark. Okay. So part of your, your lightning is also being here in state college. Right. <laughs> okay. So then, you know the so then so then bodies adapt to the conditions within which they're living right and certain bodies are going to adapt better they're going to respond more favorably and they're, they're and then they'll be healthier they'll last longer they'll produce have more progeny and all in all pass on genetic markers that are also more adaptable and then then those particular population groups work well for those particular climate climatic regions right the kinds of food that you're eating. I mean, all sorts of things, foods that are available here, but not here. You know what I mean? Bodies adapt. We're talking about thousands and thousands of generations of people. So it's like, whoa, there's a lot of time to adapt. We're not talking about just a couple of generations. So you had it basically. I mean, this is it, you know, so, so certain groups of people are hanging together and then certain features just become the dominant feature of those population groups. People weren't traveling around the world historically, right? So Jeff, if you can, or Nish, if you can put up that next slide on world population growth through history, just like, it, it's kind of a really interesting slide 
that you see that population growth only really takes off in the in the last number of centuries, right? That basically all along forever and ever and ever, you got the very small numbers of human beings living in these pods in very small groups, reproducing with one another and having lots of time to allow those, those population groups to select out the body features, the types that are really ideal for those particular um, regions of the world where they're living. And then a lot of sexual selection and just, you know, all sorts of things that just randomly happen, you know, genetic mutations and stuff. Meaning that, you know, there may be that a population group where could be kind of semi-isolated for a fairly long period of time, you know, who knows how many thousands of years and maybe just some, there was some genetic mutation that happened with one person and that gene just suddenly gets passed around. And then, you know, like, 5,000 years later or 10,000 years later, everybody in that group has that particular feature, the way of their eyebrows or their eye or their ear or something like that, you know? All right. Um, hey, can you, can you explain creationism to me? How's diversity? Uh, How does, actually, you know what? Let's go. Let's, I'm going to get somebody else on to do that. You you you've rocked it. You you you're good. Any other any other final comments about that about evolution? Um, no, not really. You get it right though. You yeah, get the, you get yeah. the idea. Yeah. So when you see these, when you see features like your features, like your really dark hair or your nose, or you the shape of your lips, or all sorts of things, right? Your eyes. Where'd you get those from? Where'd you get all those features from? Uh, my parents. Well, yeah, and they got them from, yep, and they got them from. Yeah, you know, like their parents and generations. It's just their ancestors, right? Yeah. And so I always tell people that um, no matter who we are, when we look in a mirror, we're, we're the products of, our, of all of our ancestors who survived because they had those features, right? Yeah. And they wouldn't have survived. Hey, one final thing. Can you say something about the 0.1% issue? Say, so you said something about they were all, almost all the same except, you know, 0.1%. Yeah. Um, I, I, I was just like one thing that popped into my mind when you were talking about like evolution, because that's always like taught to us that, in biology, we are 99.9% .9 the same, yeah. and that the 0.1% is like the one thing that differentiates all of us, mm. genetically speaking. Yeah, it's really fascinating. It's like, it's like nature is a trickster. You and I are 99.9% .9 the same, I and mean, we're basically identical, you and I. Yeah. And I mean, you're, you know, and so the issue is that the features, the things that we see is a very tiny percentage of our DNA admixtures, right? Of our total DNA sort of, yeah, a mix. And yet those are the ones that we focus on because we can't see all the other 99.9% .9 of us, of you and I, each other that are exactly the same. So nature tricks us in a way, kind of bizarre. Yeah, that's cool. Awesome, man. So when I look at human beings, like who are, when I go into a place where people were really different, I'm like, hey, they're my brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? And because uh, we're all brothers and sisters in that way. All right, listen, thank you. I really appreciate it. Thanks yeah, for, thank you. Yeah, thanks for hopping on. Be well. All right. Hey, can we bring somebody else on who would, um, Niha, you can just shut your, yeah. Um, just anybody who wants to come on. Hey, so I still want to do the, I want to do the,
Aha. Uh -huh. There we go. Now you can hear me. There we go. Okay, so um, on Thursday, come early to the stream, 2.45 p.m., we are going to have a special guest, Brie. If you do exclamation point B-R-I on Twitch, you'll be able to get her link um, to her website. She does songs that she writes about stories. So, um, yeah, we'll, she'll be live 2.45 p.m. right before class starts, and she'll be doing her last song in honor of Thon happening this weekend. So make sure you join on YouTube or Twitch, 2.45 on Thursday. Sam, take it away. Dude, awesome, man. Yeah, because it is Thon weekend. Thanks for that reminder. Yeah, it's a really awesome uh, musical guest for us. Kira, wait, is it Kira or Kara? Kiera. Kiera. All right, neither, it was neither. Wait, were you on the stream before? You weren't, right? Mm -mm. Well, welcome. Um, where, and are you in State College? I am. Yeah, that looks like a student. Apartment, yeah. Apartment, a student, I was gonna say, yeah, student apartment. Awesome, and what do you study? I'm double majoring, so I'm double majoring in psych and rehabilitation and human services. Yo, and why rehab and human services? Um, I wanna help people. But I don't know which way yet. So, yeah. Do you want if you want to help them with their minds or their their bodies? I want to do right? mental. All right. Well, awesome. Good for you, mom. Maybe if you figure out how to help people, you can. Do <laughs> hey, so uh, explain human biological diversity and creationism. I have no idea what either of the two are. Really? Are you a Christian? I am. But I don't, I don't, I'm not really like a sciencey. Like every time, like they talk about um, evolution and all that stuff, I never pay attention to it. Oh man, well, you're perfect because you're like most people and you're definitely like most Christians who I know who hear about, you know, creationism, Adam and Eve, and they just don't really think much about it. Right. So now's your chance to think about it. So, what ha what's the what's the biblic what's the biblical story? Like um when God created Adam and Eve and yeah. um, they sinned and then everything went to trash. Yeah, yeah, right. Hell in a handbasket, so to speak. <laughs> they sinned by what? Eating an apple? Like, come on, man. Like, I mean, I've eaten apples that are simple to eat. But you had everything else to eat, but why'd you have to eat that apple? Yo, man, maybe it was because it was really good. I don't know. All right, so listen, what's the story? How do we get so different? What? Look at you and look at me. All right. I think about that all the time. I That one, that's a hard question. Yeah, well, what do Christians say? I mean, you ever ask your pastor about that? I have, like. What she said or he said. One person and everybody started off, they think Africa, Middle East, somewhere okay. over there. Yeah, Africa, go ahead. And I know where languages come from. But I don't know exactly how we change, like our skin colors change. The only reason, I don't know how they went from dark to light, like yeah. for white people, like, cause I know Middle Eastern, you have more of a tan. So yeah. how do you go from tan to white? Dude. Well, completely black to white. That's what I'm asking. You know what I mean? Like, how do you do that? I don't know. I got, I got one for you though. What what were like, what were um, what was, what what race were Adam and Eve? Um, I'm gonna say Middle Eastern. Middle Eastern. I'm not sure. Middle. Okay. What race? That like, what they look like? What do you think oh. they look like? They look more like you or a little more like me? Um, that one's hard. I don't know. Like in the. Like the little kids' books, you always see them as white. Yeah, exactly, dude. That's because white people write those books, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, who, who, what do you think? We're going to make them anything other than white? Please. This, this, all right. All right, so listen, man. Here's the, here's the problem you got. So here's the problem with creationism. So God creates things, okay? First off, if where did God come from? By the way, can I ask you that as a Christian? I always want to ask a Christian this. Where'd God come That's from? One thing with any like evolutionary, um, it all starts with faith. 
You know, it does no matter. Something came from specifically. Yeah, exactly. Either faith or mushrooms, man. If you do mushrooms, do the special <laughs> mushrooms, you'll fig- you'll find out where God came from. Ah. Actually, I'm not endorsing that, but I'm just saying you will if you ask that question while you're taking mushrooms. You'll uh-huh. you'll have an answer. Just make sure you write it down. Right. So listen, man. I'm not endorsing that for you. So don't be telling your parents. No. All right. So now look. Um, I would endorse it for your pastor, though. Like have him mm-hmm. have him do some shrooms at some point. Like he'll have a different vision of this. So so the issue is so somehow there's a God who's somehow just always existed. Mm-hmm. Go figure, right? I, I don't know. This is I don't know. Like yeah, but whatever. It's all complicated, right? It's meant to yeah. be. And then somehow God decides, this God decides to create these two beings. Mm -hmm. And then these two beings start having children. And then their children suddenly turn into this human palette of diversity that we see today. You got to have an answer for how and why that happened. Because you know what I mean? Like you want to have, that's why you like, this is what this is. What's the answer? And so you want to know that. You want to have an answer to that. Mm-hmm. Now, with Christians, what your pastor would say is, be careful. You're going to go up there to Penn State and all those science people are going to put all these stories in your mind. And before you know it, you'll be like an atheist or something. Turn away from God. Have, they, have, have your Christian folks said that to you? Yeah. <laughs> all right. So listen, man, you don't have to turn away from God. You can like... You just have to come up with a way to synthesize these two things. Like right. the, there's life is created and then life diversifies. But what you don't see in the Bible or the Quran, um, either the Old or the New Testament or the Quran, is an explanation for the science of diversification. So that's what we were talking about earlier, right? With the previous guests. So you got to come up with the story. So the original ancestors, our ancestors, I wouldn't call them Adam and Eve, but, you know, whatever you can call. Well, I've seen Eve, by the way, if you go to Ethiopia and Addis, they have, you know, the skeleton of Eve, who is considered to be like the missing link. of sorry, not Eve, not your pastor, not the Christian Eve, but would is like, you know, it's like the, the missing link, so to speak. Mm-hmm. One of them. There are many of them. It's complicated. Okay, but somehow you have to take the Christian idea that there's a God that started this life process and then turn that life, then, then allow that life process to proceed and allow diversity to happen, which means you need evolution for that. You have to have the basic ideas of evolution. Hey, by the way, first off, um, we're going to do a, uh, let's do the, um, let's do, the, the the top hat, okay? okay? Top hat's gonna come up in about like 15 seconds or so. But Kiera, so the, the idea is you don't have to give up Christianity mm-hmm. and creationism and accept evolution. You don't have to do that. You can blend the two together. Just because a lot of Christians around you haven't thought to do that doesn't mean that you can't. Here, let me give you an arrow. Go ahead and do the top hat really fast. It's right there. I'm going to give you an arrow in your, what do you call it? Your quiver? I'm going to give you an arrow in your quiver. Is that what they call it? I don't know what that is. I'm going to give you some ammunition for evolutionary people when people are like yeah creationism is stupid it's all about evolution or whatever the case is even with evolution life has to start somewhere man you know what i mean it starts somewhere and ultimately there's a process of some kind of creativity right and that energy process is something so a lot of religious people just call it gods Or like the Hindus call it gods because there's so many millions of them, right? Okay. So in the end, creation, creation, evolutionary thinking has to account for the fact that life emerged somehow. Like where did it, it, it's the miracle of life that emerged. We just call that process God. It's fine. But Christians 
have to wrestle with the idea. So you have to wrestle with this idea that even if life emerged and there's some God, we're all really different. You you have your skin tone, the, the, the shape of your eyes. I have the shape of my eyes. You have the, you know, your hair and your hair texture. I have my hair and my hair texture. Why did that happen? It, it happened for the reasons that we talked about earlier. That our, our ancestors migrated to different areas of the world and adapted to the environments in those regions. So like you know you trace your you with your darker skin tone you you're very you you go to get on really well near the in the equatorial region whereas I don't it's going to be a problem so clearly my ancestors when you if your ancestors those ancestors who had darker skin of yours let's say I'm going to make this really simple like at some point they broke off just imagine it didn't happen like this but imagine it did right they just broke off and they went north well, as they move north, their skin tone starts to lighten over time. And then ultimately it becomes like me, and I'm part of that lighter group. You, you see? And this is happening over millions of years. And so, you know, this is, so that's, that's the process. Hundreds of thousands of years for, you know, Homo sapiens. So, there, so you see where, where, where um, evolution is important for creationist thinking because mm. you have to account for that idea but creationists have this idea that oh evolutionist thinkers demand that they be atheists it's like no you can be both bring them both together because evolution is a process of transformation mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah it does well you got to study it more because clearly all, we're just touching on the on the on the surface but like you have to account for that or else you are where you started at in the beginning of this conversation mm -hmm. which is like not really having any thought about it but now when you go back and you're in your christian communities and they talk about the evils of evolution you can say it doesn't you don't you don't have to see it that way i don't really hear people say that i've been a christian like i was in a christian school like throughout high school middle school yeah. i don't like Seriously? They still, talk, they still talked about evolution, like in bio. Like they never said anything negative towards evolution. Whoa, okay. So that's a really okay, so that's a really progressive school that's science based. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean it's a science based school. Cause you know, hey man, there are a lot of Christians out. I mean, play, the the dominant sentiment among, you know, people who are really um um creationist oriented right and evangelical oriented is just like oh my god that the earth was created like five thousand years ago by god i mean you have to get there right people try to trace the bible back to get exactly to adam and eve or adam and steve if you're you no know, part of the, the lgbt community so five thousand years ago mm, that's a little you know maybe it happened that way i don't know the Ooh. devil put all these things on on the planet to confuse us all right, man. What else? What else you got? What else did you learn today? What question do you have for me? Ask me a question about anything at all. Well, I when you were explaining the differences in sports and stuff, yeah. Why, um, why is it that most like certain sports are dominated by certain people? Like, not even yeah. because of money, like. Yeah. Like if I wanted to do hockey, I could. You but, could for sure. Yeah. I mean, no, you could. I don't know. It's just like certain things. Like I feel like some part of it is about money, and some part isn't. Like yeah. So for you, did you growing up? Did you did you know people who were really into it? Who really like basketball? Like, are you into I, sports? I am, but it's like you like I basketball. Played, I played basketball and like middle school and high school. Okay, so did you, so you were around a lot of people who played basketball. Mm -hmm. So you like basketball. It's like a, eh. Okay, but whatever, I got it. Yeah. But did you like hockey at all? Not really. I just, some sports, I just, eh, like, I don't care about baseball. Yeah, yeah. okay. Well, because you, but you know, had you grown up outside of Toronto, Canada? I, I still feel like I wouldn't like it. I don't know. Yeah, like, yeah my 
listen, Kiera, my friend, if you grew up outside of Toronto, like Edmonton, Alberta, Alberta, you know, and let's just go with Edmonton mm-hmm. in Canada, you'd like, you'd dig, you would dig sports, man. You'd dig hockey. You'd like hockey, man. You might like basketball too, but you'd like hockey. You know, you'd have friends who loved hockey. You'd have friends who played hockey. You would just be like, it would just be different. You know, you'd be like, yeah, all right. So that's part of that. You know, so a huge part is where you came from. You know, it's not all of it. All right, listen, we are at time and we have a couple of people who are still in the chat who we didn't bring on. So Nikita, hey, can everybody just stay on Zoom really fast? I want to make sure you come on next class. Kira, thanks. That was awesome. But hey, where are you from, by the way, originally? Maryland. Well, I'm a military child, so I've been like everywhere. But right now I live in Maryland. Where's the, your favorite place to have been? Okay. I like Texas because of the weather. I hate the cold. Yeah. All right. Have you, did you live overseas at all? The only place I've been is Guam, which was where I was born. Oh, yeah. Born in Guam. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Hey, class, we are as, oh, we missed the 420 mark. That special hour. <laughs> but, you know, we're all right. We're here. So, uh, uh, Let's, we'll be back rocking it on on Thursday and uh, remember Joy's missive to uh, those of you on the black and brown team about joining to be a volunteer. It's fun. It's fun, right, Kira? Yeah, it was cool. All right, man. It's cool having you. All right, y'all. We'll see you on Thursday and do what you need to do. Oh, by the way, the quiz is going to open up Thursday after class. If you're in Thon, um, we, you need to like you know, be be prepared, right? Just now's a good time to start studying for that. So don't take uh-huh. notes. Don't take notes. Don't do anything. Just read and watch videos very carefully and very thoughtfully, and you'll do fine. Are you sure the that's qu- Yeah, the quiz opens on Thursday, right after class. All right, man. Top hat's done, right? All right, man. All right, see you all. See you on Thursday. Hey, remember, block two, sign up for your groups. Block two. Hey, can everybody else turn your cameras? Okay, stream's done, right? Wait, no. All right, hang on. All right. Yeah. Hey, uh, all right, man. So, Nick, you're good. I wanted to see who didn't get on. Is it just Nikita? Are you the only one who didn't get on? Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't make it on. Dude, next class. Are you, are you ready, next class? Of course. <laughs>